In this video, we'll take a look at a new feature that we'd like to add to ClipX Pro, and that's OSC Output. Now, we already have OSC Input, which allows you to use OSC apps and devices to trigger ClipX Pro action lists. Now, we'd like to do the opposite so that we can use ClipX Pro to send OSC messages to devices and applications that support it. Some examples are lighting rigs, total mix from RME, and apps like Touch OSC. And that's what I'll be using for this demo. I have Touch OSC running on an iPad mini. Because this is a bit complex, we'd like to roll this out as a beta before adding it to a stable release. And we can use your help with testing it. You can find the files that you need for this beta on the forum. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. So let's jump in and take a look at what we can do with this initial integration. First, we have OSC Actions, and this allows you to send out arbitrary OSC messages. In this case, I'm going to be using it to write information to the bottom line on the iPad here. All right, and that could be useful in like a live context where you need visual cues of some sort. So here you can see I can show hello world and this one will show trigger the vamp. All right, very simple and yet very useful. The next aspect to OSC output is for use with the bindings component. And this allows you to view the names and values of the parameters that are bound to your controls. For this example, I've got the launch control and I've got it 16 knobs bound to parameters of the selected device. I've got four buttons here to switch between banks so I can control up to 64 parameters per device. All right, so you can see how that works here. All right, and of course the display will update when I switch the bindings. And for each bound control, you get three pieces of information. On the top line there, you can see the name of the parameter. On the bottom line, you see the value of the parameter as it would be shown in live, and that's useful for things like filter types. All right, and then lastly, we send out the value as a whole number in the range of 0 through 127, and that could be used to drive on-screen widgets like faders or knobs, like I'm using in this case. Okay? We also send out two other pieces of information that are useful in the context of bindings. On the top line there, you can see the track name. Okay? And then on the line underneath that, you've got the name of the selected device. 